In this video, I'm gonna chat about the next step. So in the previous video, we identified the features that will develop our datums to form the datum reference frame. Now we're gonna take it another step and look at how we apply the rest of the GDNT. So this information is actually in the forward to the 2009 standard. It's probably in the 2018 standard, but I'll have it in front of me. So before you even get to the real content within like four pages, there's a couple of sentences that basically explain everything you need to know. So there's three really important ones. The first is that it says, we establish a datum reference frame based on the function of the part in its assembly with its mating parts. This is what we did in the previous video. We identified features that mate an assembly and made those datum features. Now, in a second, I'll kind of show you how to do that on the drawing as well. Now, the next sentence, after the datum reference frame is established, the form of the primary datum feature is controlled followed by the orientation slash location of the secondary and tertiary datum features. So I'm gonna show you this on some scratch paper in a minute, but it's really important that your datum features are good features that are um, you know, relatively flat and square if they're surface uh, planes. The reason is that you're taking your measurements from those features. So if the place you're taking measurements from is very irregular and uneven, you're gonna get bad measurements. Now, notice when I quoted that, I said controlled. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to apply a geometric tolerance. So if it's a surface plane, normally you just do a flatness of say five thousandths but you could also just have a really tight um, size dimension, right? That would accomplish the same thing. This is the same thing when you're dealing with diameters. If you're, you have a plus minus tolerance of two tenths of a thousandths, you probably don't need a cylindricity unless you need something uh, tighter than that. Remember uh, with rule number one, the boundary of perfect form is controlled by the MMC. So the most variation you can have in that example, plus or minus two tenths of a thousandths is four tenths of a thousandths. That would be the worst your cylindricity could be. So if you couldn't live with that, then you could apply a cylindricity of one tenths of a thousandths or something. But normally, you know, uh, tight limits of size could get you by as well. Now, the last part, after the datum features are related relative to each other, the remaining features are controlled for orientation and location relative to the datum reference framework. So this is where you go through and you take any holes or any other features and you apply a position or a profile to them. And normally this will be to your primary, secondary, and tertiary datum features. So anything that's controlling location is normally needs to be locked in all six degrees of freedom to get an accurate measurement. So let me switch over to the scratch paper and we can take a, a look. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is this. Remember in the last video, we identified this surface as datum A and these two holes as datum B. And then the outside of the part would be a surface profile related to A and B. So on the drawing, it would look something like this, right? So we got a basic dimension between these two holes, a basic dimension here, controlling the height, basic dimension with the width. It's implied that these two holes go through the middle of the part, so we could have a center line going through the part. Right? On the next view, we'd have a basic dimension, or it could be a plus or minus, doesn't really matter in this case, controlling the thickness of the part. So the first thing we'll do, datum A, we said is this surface right here. We'll apply a datum feature symbol to the extension line. It could also be applied to the part surface. Now, to control this surface, we're gonna apply a flatness to it. All right, so the flatness of this datum feature is controlled. Now, the next datum feature is these two holes. So remember what I quoted before, follow, or the 
Orientation and location of the secondary and tertiary datum features needs to be controlled. So in this case, we're actually gonna use a position tolerance because we want to control these two holes to each other with this basic dimension. I'll apply, I'm just using X's for all the dimensions because it don't really matter for what we're talking about. So this is position to A. So it's saying that these two holes need to be within whatever this is, uh, according to this basic dimension, to each other, and they also need to be perpendicular to datum A because position controls orientation as well. And now, this is about the only place you could put that uh, datum feature symbol. We're identifying these two holes as datum B. Now the last thing is we'll use those two datums to control the outside of the part. We're gonna do an all around symbol, profile of the surface, make it something kind of large to A, and then I'm running out of room here but this would be B or preferably B at M and C. So that's all there is to it. The first uh, three steps, we established the datum reference frame before, we controlled the primary datum, we controlled the orient orientation and location of the secondary datum, we actually only need two datums in this case, and then the remaining features we controlled for orientation and location relative to the datum reference framework. The last thing we do here is just apply a, a profile to this surface because this basic dimension implies that there needs to be a geometric control on this bottom surface. So we just make that whatever, 10 thousandths to A. Okay, so let's move on to the next part here. Why don't we do a cylindrical part? So this is one of these thumb screws where we identified the thread as datum A and this small surface right here as datum B because that where, that's where it contacts at assembly. Now, threads are a little different, okay? Remember I mentioned that the, four, the primary datum feature needs to be controlled. Well, with the thread, they have their own tolerances, so there's no need to control a thread any further. They just are what they are. So datum B, we identified as this surface. Datum B would likely get controlled with a perpendicularity, right? Datum B is perpendicular to datum A. Datum A is the axis of the pitch cylinder of this thread that would go through the part, and we're just saying datum B needs to be perpendicular to that. Now, we would go ahead and control all the other features, so I already have this uh, outside diameter punched in. We just do a position diameter of something to A and B. And since we're talking about threads, if possible, if the this thread doesn't locate anything per se, we could identify the thread as major diameter, and that would indicate to the inspection team that they could just uh, use the, they could use the major diameter of the thread to simulate that datum instead of having to try to find the pitch cylinder of the thread to simulate that datum, okay? And then this surf, this uh, diameter right here would be controlled with a position just like this. I'll skip that for now. So now, we'll take a look at this U-shaped part remember we identified this surface as datum A, these two surfaces as datum B, and then this width feature as datum C. So that would be the center plane of that feature. The way we apply that to the drawing, datum A, datum B, and then datum C, I'll just put over here for now. It's in line with the dimension that indicates that it applies to the center of that feature. And it would probably be more correct to have a center line going through that part to make that more clear drafting wise. Now, same idea, datum A will apply a flatness, say 10 thousandths. Datum B will make perpendicular to datum Datum B, normally we would make perpendicular, right? Makes sense. But since we have two surfaces here, perpendicularity wouldn't control those two surfaces together. We need a coplanarity, so we would need a profile for this. 
So normally I'd put it right in this area, but I'm kind of out of room. So I'll just do a profile over here. And then somewhere you just put two times. I'll put a little arrowhead there. So that would control these two surfaces relative to datum A. I know it's getting a little messy. So this is a profile of 10 thousandths to datum A. In this case, all the profile is doing is controlling the perpendicularity of these two surfaces to datum A, but it's also controlling the coplanarity of the two surfaces, which is what makes it different from perpendicularity in this case. Now, datum C would most likely since it's just a, a normal two surfaces here, we just make that per perpendicular to A and B. Okay. And that's our datum reference frame. Another word for this is qualifying, making sure all your datum features are controlled. And now we could go through and apply all of the rest of our uh, tolerances to datum A, B, and C. I know I'm running out of room here. So down here, these two holes, position, diameter symbol, whatever number we choose. I know I was using X's before, but I'm so used to writing 30 thousandths to A, B, and C. Okay, so same datum reference frame throughout. It's a pretty straightforward process, right? You choose your datum features that become your datums, identify them with the datum uh, feature symbol, and then you go through and apply control to your datum features, whether it's with a form tolerance for the primary datum or even a profile, and then usually an orientation or a profile for your secondary and tertiary datums. After you have all that done, you just go through and all the other features, you'll apply a position or a profile to them to the existing datum reference frame. Now I mentioned before, that if your part has more than one datum reference frame, you essentially have to do this whole process twice, right? If you, even if you have one datum reference frame, three datum, so A, B, and C, if you call out a position to C, A, B, that's a different datum reference frame. That implies that the inspection team has to set the part up differently. So you just, you can do it, you just wanna keep it in mind if you're putting that on a drawing. So that's it for this video. Just a, a real quick talk about how to apply GD&T. Like I said, all this comes from the foreword of the ASME Y145 2009 standard. Those three sentences I quoted earlier. It's a pretty good overview of how the system works. Uh, of course, you know, the other videos I've made get into the details about how to apply this stuff, but this is essentially how it goes. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.